Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to episode 3 of the podcasts. Uh, this podcast today is going to be about haunted dolls from around the world. I'm going to start off with number one. Ah, a doll from Japan. It's called Okiku. The story goes, in 1918, a young man purchased a doll that would later on claim the name of Okiku as her own for his two-year-old sister. And the legend would kickstart a tourism flash. Japan during this era was stu- still stuck in ways of feudal- feudalism, while the world around her was embracing the progress of technology and science. Japan was holding tight to her beliefs and to her rich mythology and fables. This was a land and still is by all accounts where demons, ghosts, vampires, and other creatures roam free. A land where goblins and evil spirits were constantly harassing normal folks. On February 3rd, you drove evil spirits away by going to shrines and through rituals and folklore practices. Set Subin events like monsters gobbled kids up northwest of Mount Fuji, drove people insane and compelled them to suicide. Foxes were sacred and devoted animals. The doll was brought in Sapporo by a 17-year-old Ikichi Suzuki in 1918 for his two-year-old sister Okiku. He was touring the region for a maritime exhibition and the doll instantly drew his eyes. The perfect little thing sat on a shop window enticing him. He didn't think twice. He went in and instantly purchased a figurine for his sister using the last of his money. At 40 centimeters tall and dressed in a traditional kimono, the doll was exquisite. Its hair was raven black and cut to roughly shoulder length in a traditional Okapa hairstyle. Her eyes were piercing coals that seemed to swallow everything up in their gaze. The thing was mesmerizing and enchanting something to take your breath away. He went back home and gave the doll to his little sister. She fell in love with the doll immediately. It transformed into Okiku's favorite toy and more importantly her best friend. She played every day with the doll, took it everywhere, and treated the figure like it was her own sister. She would talk and prattle with the doll, feed it, sleep with it. She decided to call the doll Okiku, a mere duplicate of herself. The doll never left her sight. Then a year later, tragedy struck. In 1919, Okiku died yellow fever had descended on the land and rubbed the family of the little girl. Okiku died gasping for air in pain and afraid. The doll held firmly in her gasp. In her grasp. She was only three years old. The family wanted to bury the doll along with Kiku but circumstances and governmental oversight prevented this last act of kindness. The doll was never Lay to rest with Okiku. One day the family started to notice that the doll's hair was growing longer. Once a traditional shoulder length cut with neat ends, now a mangled mess of split ends reaching down past her waist. At night they started to dream of Okiku. And sometimes the doll would appear by their side come morning. The chilling events intensified and grew into full-blown acts of spiritual infestation. 
lights flicking on and off, bangings in the house, noises, and strange voices. The closer the year got to the certain key dates of Kiku's birthday and the day of her death, over time there were certain in town shemaine spiritual leaders con concurred that their daughter's soul was in fact trapped within the doll. In 1938, the family relocated to a new district. They had now become accustomed to Okiku and had even grown fond of their daughter's restless spirit. The family approached a local temple and asked them to please take care of the doll. The temple by now has heard countless stories of this amazing doll. The haunted doll whose hair grew every year. They were fascinated. Over time, they've managed to confirm the veracity of some of the claims, particularly that the hair does indeed grow. The priest sent out cut samples of the hair. Scientific examination of Okiku proved that the hair was that of a human child. As years passed, the doll's fame grew more and more and her powers further developed. She's stronger, her hair growing faster and wilder, and she's even spookier. The last event driving Tauruses mad is the frightening claim is that the mouth of Okiku is slowly opening and that if you dare to peer inside you may be able to gl glimpse something like baby teeth spouting like weeds from porcelain gums. Okiku is located in her private shine on display in a little wooden box in the Man Manji Temple in the town of Awamizawa Okado, Japan. That is Okiku. Next, we're going to the infamous Annabelle. According to the Warrens, a student nurse was giving the doll named Annabelle in 1970. They said that the doll behaved strangely and that a physic medium told the student that the doll was inhabited by the spirit of a deceased girl named Annabelle. The student and roommate tried to accept and nurture the spirit possessed doll, but the doll reportedly exhibited malicious and frightening behavior. It was at this point that the Warrens say they were first contacted moving the doll to their museum after pronouncing it demonically possessed. The doll remains in the glass box at the Warrens Occult Museum in Monroe, Connecticut. Texas State University Assistant Professor of Religious Studies Joseph Laycock says most skeptics have dismissed the Warren's Museum as full of off-the-shelf Halloween junk, dolls, and toys. Books you could buy at any bookstore. He calls the Annabelle legend an interesting case in the relationship between pop culture and the paranormal. Next, we are going to the doll. Well, this ain't a doll, but it's a legend of a haunted uh, vessel. It's not a doll. It's a Escape or vessel, what they call it. It's not a type of doll, but it's a escape or vessel, what they call it. The spirit attached to this vessel is called the Lizard Man. Ah. 
the lizard man is an entity said to inhabit this type of vessel first mentioned in the late 1980s the purported sightings and damage attributed to the creature yielded a significant amount of newspaper radio and television publicity on July 14th 1988 the Lee County Sheriff's Office investigated a report of a car damaged overnight while parked at a home in the area of Brown Till Browntown outside Bishopville, South Carolina. On the edges of town, the car reportedly had tooth marks, scratches with hair, and muddy footprints left behind. Sheriff Liston Truesdale noted to his other officers in in the trunk of this car there lays this doll or this vessel so they call it scientists have researched and they have come up with the name of the scape no sorry yeah scape or vessel see. Sheriff Linston Trustaid also noted that this was the start of various claims that eventually coalesced into a story about a lizard man in the vessel. Prompted by the news of the vehicle damage, 17-year-old local Christopher Davis reported to the sheriff that his car was damaged by a Creature he described as green, about seven feet tall, had three fingers, red eyes, and had skin like a lizard, snake like scales two weeks prior. According to Davis, he was driving home from working the night shift at a fast food restaurant when his car all of a sudden got a flat tire. After fixing it, he saw a dark creature walking toward him. David got in his car and began to drive, but the creature was soon on top of this car. He applied the brakes, cr causing the creature to roll off the car, giving Davis enough time to escape. gonna go to one more nope so we got three more on the list the next one is called Mandy the doll with a sinister smile Mandy has been scaring the absolute crap out of people, out of staff members and volunteers at the British Columbia's Quesnel and District Museum since 1991. Shortly after she was donated, strange events started happening like the sounds of disembodied footsteps and vanishing office supplies. To name a few, several museum guests are made uneasy by her regularly commenting on her sinister smile and lifelike eyes. The next one is called Harold the Cursed Doll. Harold pretty much tops the list that make us say, oh heck no. The doll was listed on eBay in 2003 where the seller alleged that his presence in the home caused the death of their cat, the end of their relationship, chronic migraines, and the seller even heard the disembodied voices of children playing in their basement. Harold was passed around from owner to owner for the next several years. He's rumored he's been rumored to have caused various deaths and illnesses. His last owner was Anthony Quinata, 
who claims to have exercised the doll and has sworn to never speak of Harold again. And the last and final one, the infamous Robert the doll. The doll originally belonged to Robert Eugene Otto, an artist who belonged to a prominent Key West family. The doll purchased by Otto's grandfather while on a trip to Germany in 1990-1904 and given to young Otto as a birthday gift. The doll's sailor suit was likely an outfit that Otto wore as a child. The doll remained stored in the family home at 534 Eaton Street in Key West. The couple... Otto married Annette Parker in Paris on May 3, 1930. The couple returned to the Otto family home in Key West who lived there until Otto died in 1974. His wife died two years later. The doll was then donated to the East Martello Museum in Key West, Florida. According to the legend, the doll has supernatural abilities that allow it to move, change its facial expressions, and make giggling sounds. Some versions of the legend claim that a young girl of Bahamian descent gave Otto the doll as a gift or as retaliation for a wrongdoing. Other stories claim that the doll moved voodoo figurines around the room and was aware of what went on around him. Still other legends claim that the doll vanished after Otto's house changed ownership a number of times after his death. Or that young Otto triggered the doll's supernatural powers by blaming his childhood mishaps, mishaps on the doll. According to local folklore, the doll has caused car accidents, broken bones, job loss, divorce, and a cornucopia of other misfortunes and museum visitors supposedly experience these misfortunes for failing to respect Robert well guys that's going to do it for this podcast today hope you like it and I'll catch you on the next one bye